In this video, we will look at the form element. Now, a form has become a very standard feature on almost every website and almost every page on every website. This is a way for people to reach out and make contact with you. They are also used as opt-in forms for MailChimp, MailerLite and other such subscription services. Let's have a look in this video at how you bring in the form to make a contact form so that people can contact you from your site. I'll go into the builder and I will just use a blank block with two columns to bring in the form. Over here, go to add elements on the left and you will see the form element one, two, three, four, fourth row from the top, first one on the left, and you just simply drag and drop it. There are a number of features here, but let's look first at the fields, these areas where you want the visitor to fill in their information. The first field is called email. When I click in it, I have the option to double click or delete the text and type in my own. So for this case, I'm just going to say email address. So just to show you something different. The options for this field is found over here in the toolbar where it says field. If you click on it, you will see field type is set to email. And we will work with that very soon. Do you need the person who's sending you this form to fill it in? Is it required? The answer is yes. And we will look at these two very shortly. Now I also want the sender to provide me with their name and also their surname. To do so, I'm going to duplicate this field. I just go over here to duplicate and I click on it. And now I have two email addresses. Of course, I don't want that. I just want to have a name and a surname. Let's do the same. I'm going to triple click here and type in name. What is important now is to go and change the field type. Go again here to field, go to field type and change it to text. That will allow the field to recognize it as text. The next thing I'm going to do is reduce the width to 50%. That will make the field half of the entire contact form. Spacing, I will still leave it at 15 pixels. And next, I will go ahead and duplicate this one. Because I'm duplicating a field at 50%, it brings in another field at 50%. So I don't need to make any changes except change the name of the field. Double click and we call this one surname. Let's have a look at the other fields that come with the form in Brizzy. This one that says select allows the user to select various options which you can collect. I'm going to inquire about the people contacting me, their skill level. So I'll call this skill level. And then for option one, I will call it beginner. Are you a beginner? Option two, or are you intermediate? And then I'll add a new one. I'll simply click here and type advanced. And then to add it, I'll click here on the arrow. And now it's part of that. I'm done with that. Just go up here and make sure it's put on the select option. We also have other options. For example, we have paragraph and we have a number in case you want to collect a telephone number. The paragraph is for longer text. And that's what you will get typically in this field over here where you want people to leave a message. I like that and type leave your message. Now I've set up all my fields. They are ready. Let's do some styling. And the styling for all the fields can be accessed via the toolbar for any individual field. So if I click here on the topography while we are in this paragraph field, it will apply the styling to all the fields. Let's go to the top one here so that you can see it better. I click on topography and I'm going to choose catamaran, this font over here. And you can see it changes it for all the fields simultaneously going to change the font weight. Let's put it on something like medium so we can see it better. Size a little bit bigger at 1.8. Reduce the line height a little bit and increase the letter spacing. Just so you can see, you can do all of these things. And that is the topography. Next, go to the colors where we have background, label, and border. The background, of course, is the background of the field. So if I put it on black, this is how it will look. If I put it on blue, same thing. And I'm going to put it on white. If you want to have it transparent, you just grab the opacity slider, drag it all the way to zero, and now the background is actually transparent. Next, let's have a look at the label. Now, the label is the text within the field. And again, we can change the color here. I'm just going to choose this darker blue color, and I'm happy with that, except I'll move the opacity all the way to 100%. And then we can also style the border. You can change the color. I'll put it on the same blue. And over here, you have control over the size. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to increase it. And that's way too thick, unless that is the effect you're going for. I'll put it back at one and I'll also reduce the opacity a little bit 
just so it blends in better. Let's click outside and we've got a very good looking form already. I'll just change the topography a little bit smaller here for the text size. That looks much better. The last two things you need to do is one style the button and then set up the button where it will send to. I'll change the text first and I'll change it to send away. And then let's go over here to the button icon and we style the button. We can have it at small, medium, large or your custom settings over here. I'm going to leave it at medium. You can have it like this, which is a full fill or just the bounding box or nothing. Then we just have to go and change the colors. I'll put it back on fill. You can also have rounded corners or set your own corners. I'll keep it sharp and then the border, if any, you select over here. I'm going to put it on one pixel. The icon over here is selected within this frame and you can put the icon on the left or on the right and you can also change the size of the icon as well as the spacing between the text and the icon. For this, I'm going to remove the icon, not going to use that at all. Let's go and style topography. I'm going to put it on catamaran as well. This time I'm going to increase it and then reduce the line height a little bit and three letter spacing. That's pretty nice. I think this is good. Color next, we've got background, text, border and shadow as well as hover state that you can activate over here. For the background, I'm going to choose this dark one and then the text, I'll leave it on white and the border, I will also leave it on that color, but no shadow. And then for the hover state, what I will do is I will make the background white, I will make the text dark and I will put the border also on a darker one. Right, there you go. Nicely done. Now our button is styled and we can also align it Put it there on the right and for the final part we have to set up the settings this will also be done in two stages the first one is to connect it over here you click on this little plug and then you will see it says wordpress click on the wordpress and it will set up where you can type in the email address to which you want the message to go to in this case john doe at foreverafter.com and here you put in a subject so that when it arrives at that email you know where it's from and you can say from my Brizzy site or whatever you want to put in there. Next is continue and it's done. Now if people fill it in and they send it, it will go to John Doe at foreverafter.com. Let's have another look at that one just so you can also be aware of where the apps for integration is. Watch the other videos here on YouTube to learn more about these integration features. Let's close up. I said there were two steps. We already connected this to an email account to send. And the last part is what we call the messages, the success message and the error message. After somebody fills in the form, what is it going to say? You can type in anything here like congratulations, good job, very well done, marvelous performance. Your message has been successfully sent. And then error is when something was wrong. Oops, you did it again. And oops, of course, with one or oh, less there. For redirect, we put in a URL that if the person sends the message, it will take them to a page you want them to be on, like to a new page, like a page that says something about, thank you very much for sending this message. And if you have that URL, you put it in here. Again, if you put it in here, the moment the person clicks send, it will take them to that page, right? So we have styled, we've set up everything for our form. Let's go and update our form. And before we move onwards to go and view it on the front end, always a good idea to go and have a look at how this will display on the mobile displays. Let's go there, tablet. And I think this looks pretty nifty. You can make changes if you needed to. Skill level, everything looks good. And then on the mobile, there we go. Very nicely done on the mobile device as well. Let's go and view it on the front end by clicking on preview. And I'll scroll down and here is my form. From here on, I can type in Brad Presley, my email brad.presley at icon.com. And my skill level is intermediate and miss you like crazy. And then after that, send it away. And then we will get your message has been successfully sent. And if it didn't, it will tell you, oops, you did it again. And now you can go and check your email, your message has arrived. And that is the form element. For other tutorials on the other elements within Brizzy, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Also join the Facebook community and check out our website at brizzy.io.